Qantas has its main hubs in Australia's capital Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Adelaide and Brisbane. From there, Qantas serves all destinations around the world, especially Asia and the US. And from Perth, its legendary 17-hour route to London. Do you flew on this route already? However, Qantas has also hub in Asia. To be specific, in Singapore. But why has an Australian airline a hub in Singapore so far away? A hint, it's what we think and something more that Qantas uses this hub for. So keep watching until the end to find out. Seen historically, because Australia is a former British colony, Qantas has a high demand for travel to the UK, especially London as it's the financial and economical hub of the UK and a connection to other cities in Ireland and the UK, where most people's origins are. To be able to fly this long distance, Qantas needs to refuel its planes on the way, obviously. But why did they not continue to fly via Dubai? The problem with Dubai is that you not get as much additional passengers from Dubai to London and vice versa compared to Singapore. Qantas is in the rest of Europe and the Middle East not as known as in Asia and will not be able to feed their flight to Dubai as much as it would in Singapore. In Singapore you have 37,000 international companies and next to the Asian companies also a lot of big companies from the West have their Asian branch there. In Dubai you don't have much branches from big international companies from Europe or Asia. When you look at the United Arab Emirates gross national income, you see that in 2016, where the decision probably was made to go back to Singapore, the GNI per capita is higher in Singapore with 53,250 US dollars compared to 44,460 US dollars in the UAE. Also, Dubai has a smaller population with 3.49 million people living in the city compared to 5.4 million people living in Singapore. An additional factor is that Singapore is Australia's largest two-way trading partner and its fifth largest trading partner in services and goods, stated the government of Australia. If you want to see more aviation analysis, please subscribe. Another aspect is that one of Australia's biggest communities are Asians. The country's population consists of 17.4% of people with Asian background. Especially the Malaysian population increased by about 19% from the 2011 census to the 2016 census. The Changi Airport as an additional hub is perfect as a clever feeder system. You might ask yourself, what do you mean with feeder system? Let us look how. On one side, from Singapore you can compete better for passengers from the local region and the city because Singapore is a wealthy hub with much economic power and business travel between Australia and Asia to the UK. Also, like you see in the screenshots, Qantas offers tickets to London or Australia via Singapore from Bangkok and Kuala Lumpur. It's also better to feed their flights to London from every city in Australia where they offer flights to Singapore anyway that benefits the load factor on Singapore roads. Another aspect for Singapore is that it's the best airport in the world. Singapore's Changi Airport was rated as the best by Skytrax. The airport offers everything the Dubai Airport offers and additionally its parks. The huge waterfall in the airport attracts many passengers yearly to transit in Singapore as well. Terminal 1 in Singapore where Qantas operates flights from is also Qantas first class launch. In other parts of the airport you can also experience the waterfall, you can go to the cinema, go into multiple parks, visit the kinetic rain sculpture and much more. Th through these attractions on the stop in Singapore, customers will associate the flight with Qantas more with fun and exclusivity even if the airport does not belong to Qantas. Dubai is a world class airport as well but can't offer as much attractions and is not like the Singapore airport as itself a brand. Because think about it, even if you don't have been to Singapore at Changi airport, remember the big waterfall from social media and will be excited to see it. When you think of Dubai airport, I personally only remember is at the normal airport and Emirates. And I think that's also the case with most passengers, I think. The marketing guys from Singapore airport 
are certainly doing a very good job. The flights to London via Singapore offer with the A380 a lot of economy capacities which the 787 actually cannot offer. Also, the 12 A350-1000 that Qantas ordered for the Project Sunrise, which will start in 2025, has only 140 seats in economy, 40 in premium economy, 52 business class seats and 6 first class seats. This equals only 238 seats on an A350-1000. 2 plus 2 is 4, minus 1, that's 3 quick maths. For example, Qatar Airways has 327 seats in its A350-1000. That's a big difference. Do you flew already on the A350-1000? For families, the stop will be much more comfortable because 17 hours with kids in a plane will not be fun at all. In Singapore, you have so many attractions to entertain your kids with, then it's not really a big thing if you stop and then everyone can relax a bit and then go on your next long flight. Most passengers like the A380 more than the 787 or A350 because of its white and silent cabin, which could also lead to more economy class passengers on a Singapore road. So when you're in Singapore, why not stop there for a couple of days? So a stopover is also a good idea and attracts additional passengers on this road. Additionally, Qantas keeps the culture agreement anyway with Emirates, so they can benefit from its European network. The key points of a hub in Singapore are more national income than Dubai, more people in the city than Dubai, fewer flights from cities close to Singapore to Australia and vice versa, better load factor on routes from Australia to Singapore, the airport is a brand itself and offers the most amenities during a stay. Customers will perceive the airline as better because of the stop in Singapore. Customers like the A380 and choose Qantas therefore. Singapore Changi Airport is an attraction itself, especially its widely known waterfall, so customers would choose Changi as a stop rather than other airports. Customers can choose between a long direct route and two flights with a refreshing stopover and a stop to refuel the aircraft, obviously. In Singapore are more companies from Asia and the West because it's a tax haven, and that guarantees business travel between Australia and Singapore, and Singapore and to London. Singapore is additionally also the largest two-way trading partner of Australia. Many people in Australia come from Asia. That are the benefits of a hub in Singapore. I hope you liked it. If you want to see more aviation analysis from different perspectives, please subscribe. And thank you to my current subscribers.